all 25 members of England's World Cup squad have issued a statement supporting their skipper. It seems the rugby union is facing a choice between climb down or player revolt. Kevin Geary, BBC News. Sunday betting, both on and off race courses, was allowed for the first time today. The occasion attracted a capacity crowd to Newmarket for the 1,000 guineas, and the first classic to be run on a Sunday was run by Harayir at 5 to 1. On the guineas! On the 1,000 guineas! Britain is one of the last horse racing countries in Europe to introduce Sunday betting, but on the evidence of the crowds at Newmarket this afternoon, it's a popular move. This year's festival has attracted a record number of spectators, with many people visiting the races for the first time. Well, it doesn't bother me at all. It's the first time I've ever done it. It's the first time I've ever bet on a horse. So, I mean, uh, it's got me hooked, hasn't it? <laughs> I only came today to see what it's just to have a sample. I think it's wrong. Waste of time. The big race of the day was the 1,000 guineas, the first ever classic to be held on a Sunday. The race was won by the five to one shot Haraya, ridden by Richard Hills, with the favorite Akarid second. As always, there were winners and losers, but for the bookmakers, today it was a significant victory. It's taken them 15 years to win approval for Sunday betting, although there are still some objections. The families uh, will be disrupted because a lot more people will have to work. And the second point is maybe fathers who are addicted to betting will spend many hours in the betting shop instead of back at home. We thought trade might be equivalent to a midweek meeting. It's been equivalent to a Saturday. And we had punters knocking the doors down at 11.30 and we didn't intend to open till 12. It's good for the whole industry. There are 24 Sunday horse racing fixtures this year with the promise of more in years to come. Roger Farrant, BBC News, Newmarket. And tonight's main news again. The Queen and other world figures have offered prayers for peace and reconciliation on the second day of formal VE Day commemorations. And the main news here in Paris. As you've heard, Jacques Chirac has been elected president after 14 years of trying. From a noisy, rowdy, festive Paris, good night. And a very good evening to you. Well, tomorrow might be a very special day. It'll also be a very different day in many ways. We had another hot and sunny day in England and Wales. It wasn't quite as hot in Scotland and Northern Ireland. The change has already taken place, and the temperatures tomorrow will be vastly different as this cold front is sweeping through the country, even as I speak, and leaving us in a northerly. So although it could be considered warm in the south, the change will be something like 10 degrees on the temperatures. Not much change at all in Scotland. Now that cold front has been bringing a little bit of rain, in fact the odd crack of thunder just recently to the far east of England, and there's rain rather more persistently in northern Scotland. Most of it will disappear except in the north of Scotland overnight, and temperatures will fall to a lower value than last night, though it shouldn't be that chilly for most of us. Tomorrow starts fine for most. England and Wales, and probably Northern Ireland, and there's a few light showers. There'll be more persistent rain in northern Scotland, but even that will turn a little bit showery from the west as the day goes on, although the wind will increase. And that same wind, a northwesterly breeze, will bring one or two showers down through into the rest of England, possibly the Midlands and maybe eastern England. As a reminder of the temperatures, disappointing, although if it had been average the last few days, you'd think, jolly, warm, nice. On to Tuesday now, still the northerly, sunshine and showers. Here's the news about Tuesday on BBC One. At seven, try a taster of a brand new show about food, The Good Food Show, with food facts and top tips. Then at a quarter past seven, we're early to Albert Square, where the coach is talking tough. It's not a matter of life and death. Football's more important than that. At a quarter to eight, it's downhill all the way for a new arrival. Yeah, everything's changing. He's Mountie Benton Fraser, and he's headed due south. Then at 9.30, part two of What Did You Do in the War, Auntie? and the birth of the war correspondent. Hello, BBC. This is Godfrey Talbot. That's the story for Tuesday on BBC One. Coming home after the end of the war for evacuees and soldiers was not in every case an occasion of pure joy. Some moving stories are told in 15 minutes. On BBC One Now, the news from 50 years ago, presented by Sue Lawley.